Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fahm, the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today, and we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you, and I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. This series could change your life forever. It's very important that you understand how the enemy works. Uh, the dirty shame of all dirty shames is that some people try to praise God when the devil's been loose in their life. In other words, the devil will do something and they give God credit for it. That's a dirty shame. And then they'll come to a church like this and hear preaching that actually cuts, trying to, God trying to circumcise your ear before it's too late. And people say, oh, I don't like that. That's not love. I know it's not love. That's, no, this is, this is love. This is where you find the love of the true Abba Father. He loves us too much to let our flesh run wild. I just exposed one way the enemy works right there. The enemy wants you just to feed the flesh all the time, all the time, all the time. Have a steady diet, feeding the flesh, and then wonder why you can't conquer certain things. Well, that's why. You feed the flesh, flesh is going to roar. Matches the devil's roar. You know, you feed the flesh, Wednesday night service is optional. Now see, you shouldn't act like I'm slapping you. You're here. I don't mean I'm slapping those streaming or listening by radio. They, they couldn't be here for whatever reason. I mean, they're tuned in. They're listening. I'm talking about people that are just so busy. They don't even care about the word. It just, whatever. The cares of life choke out the, the word of God. But see, coming to church is so important. Because you learn things like how the enemy works that can help you in life so that you don't live this life and then blame God when it was the devil that did something. That's what Job did. He didn't know. He was ignorant. He didn't have a Bible. We shouldn't be that ignorant. Now, Job was a great man because he wouldn't curse God. He had more character than most modern-day Christians. They have a whole Bible they never read. They use as a coaster instead. And yet Job, I mean, he didn't curse God. His wife was telling him, curse God. And I don't know what kind of wife that is, but I tell you what, you got to get rid of that. I'm not advocating divorce for those that like to twist things. Let's go to the Bible. Say it. Thank God for the Word. Second Corinthians 2.11 is our base scripture, our golden text, if you will. Second Corinthians 2.11, lest Satan should take advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices. Devices here means thoughts. Ignorance should never be accommodated in your life. Don't ever accommodate ignorance. Instead, attack ignorance with the truth. Now, ignorance claims many times that the truth is hard. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, and you may think, see, if you're ignorant, think, well, ah, that's just John's opinion, or that's just Paul's opinion, that's just Peter's opinion, that's just Jesus' opinion. Well, they're right. And the Word is truth. The Word is light. We read that in this series. Therefore, we should not be ignorant of the devil's thoughts. We should be able to recognize when the thought hits our brain, wait, 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 that's of the devil. Let me help you out, because people seem confused sometimes. I haven't heard this here in this church, but I've been in church life all my life, and I've heard people in church say things like this. I think God is leading me to marry someone else. I think my wife, you kind of like that story Dr. Barclay told, yeah. where that guy showed up at his office. My wife was good for bearing children, but now God's called me to ministry. He's called me to this other woman. Now, now that's trash. And that guy was acting like it was God. That's ignorance gone to seed is what that is. It brings forth a terrible harvest. Ignorance gone to seed brings forth all kinds of terrible tragedies in life. And that's what happened with that guy. He ended up dead early. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not just making this up. I've heard of other stories, but that's the one that just popped in my head as I was telling this. But people will think things that stupid. If you're in covenant with your spouse, God's not calling you to somebody else. That's a device. That's a thought of Satan. You should be able to recognize that. Most of y'all do. Most of y'all do in this room. You're like, of course we recognize that. But what about these other subtle things that we don't always recognize as the devil? Because we think, well, there's some truth to it. Never forget this. A fable is like a sandwich. It's got error. It's got truth in the middle. And then it's got error on top. He said, well, I don't like that example. Then reverse it. It's got truth here. It's got air in the middle and truth up top. It's going to have a little truth or you wouldn't even listen to it, right? You take a bite of that, it's a fable. If you don't come to the truth and humble yourself to the truth of God's Word, all you can turn to and live is a fable. There's nothing else out there, guys. There, there's nowhere else to turn. There's nowhere else to go. It's all fables. What you see is everyone trying to keep up with the Joneses. I heard uh, today, I was listening to an audio I have of a great man of God, Pastor Bob Nichols, who's up in his late 80s, early 90s. I don't remember his exact age, but he's around 90. And he's pastored for more than 50 years down there in Fort Worth, Texas. He's now out of the pulpit, but he's still a man of God that we should honor. And I was listening to an audio from him from about 12 years ago. And he was talking about this very thing, how people are ignorant of what the devil's doing. They have no clue whether it's God or the devil. They have no idea. They're just, they don't have a clue. And it's like, wow, he was saying that after pastor all those years, I'm not going to be discouraged in Jesus' name. But he made this statement. He said, people aren't really listening like you think they are. And I thought, man, what a shame. Because, I mean, you listen to something like this. This is more than just, oh, look at this graphic. Look at the wolf. Oh, this is a new series. Man, there's truth in here that can change your life. And he talked about how many people he had pastored that at one time acknowledged the truth, but they wouldn't live it out. And he was almost, his voice was cracking. He was almost weeping, thinking of certain people. And I thought to myself, Lord, have mercy. It is terrible when you pastor, especially that many years, longer than I've been alive. And he's seen people after people come and go and not live the truth. They'll acknowledge it, but not live it. Wow. It's time to set ignorance to the side. Somebody say amen. amen. So ignorance will claim, well, the truth is hard. No, no, no. Knowing the truth will set you free. <laughs> John 8 says that. So see, don't ever allow yourself to be ignorant anymore. Okay? So anytime the thought comes, truth is hard. You know immediately, wait a minute, that's ignorance. That's, that somehow I don't know something going on here. I don't know the full picture. And you'd be wise if you don't know it all just to be quiet instead of speaking against the truth. Amen. Here's a truth that some people think is hard, but it's really not. First John chapter 3, verse 8, thank God for the word, says this. He who sins is of the devil. And you see, ignorance immediately, wait a minute. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Exactly. The devil's been having a heyday. By the way, just because the scripture says all have sinned, past tense, that does not equate all are sinning right now. See, that's a thought of the devil. I'm exposing how the devil works. That's a thought of the devil. Just because you might still be yielding to sin doesn't mean everybody is yielding to sin. I was a little yelly there. I made up a word, yelly. I was yelling there when I talked about you. I was trying to wake you up because some of you are sleepy because it's Wednesday night. And you need to wake up. There is a devil loose. And we're exposing how he works. Listen, what is the devil, where does he work and have his heyday? In sin. The devil will always try to get you to sin. Why would I say that? Because of what this says. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, though, I like this. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Glory to God. You need to know this. Guess who wants you ignorant of this scripture? The devil, the enemy. 
He would love for you not to know this. But Jesus came literally to obliterate. I've studied this verse since I was a young lad, and here's what I found out. He came to drop a nuke on the devil. <laughs> Everything the devil wants to do, ba-boom. I want you to see a mushroom cloud. Destroying every work, every addiction, every evil thought he tries to bring your way. Jesus came to destroy it. Amen. Therefore, stop putting up with anything from the enemy. He has no right. Jesus came to destroy those works. So if what's happening in your body or in relationships or in your finances or anything else is of the devil, then you've got to say, no, I'm putting my foot down. Jesus came to destroy those works. I'm a follower of Jesus. Jesus lives in me. I've got the same power in me that caused him to rise up out of the grave. Therefore, I'm coming up out of this situation. Pastor Jeremy Fowle here from Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, inviting you to watch our weekly television broadcast right here on this channel. Accelerate Church is in Amarillo and we offer services on Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesday, 7 p.m. We'd love to have you. If you can't be here in person, you ought to stream online at acceleratechurch.cc. That's our website. You can find all our information there. We offer weekly children's ministry, high school age ministry, college age ministry, and more at Accelerate Church. It's going to require revelation knowledge to escape how the enemy works in this end time hour. I said it's going to take some revelation knowledge. This is a requirement for every Christian. If you don't know something's of the enemy, you won't resist it. And remember, you're under command from 1 Peter 5 to resist the devil. James chapter 4, to resist the devil. You're under command. The commander said, resist him. So that command has not changed, and we're going to keep resisting him until that final battle. Praise God, I'm excited. And you say, well, the final battle, Armageddon. Well, guess what? The devil's going to be bound for a 1,000 years, but then he's going to be let loose, and people are still going to rebel. Isn't that crazy? So don't sit here and think the devil's not going to make it seem appealing, that he's not going to come in a subtle, cunning way. That's how he's coming. He probably, especially to Christians, ain't going to show up with a pitchfork and horns. He did that last night across neighborhoods all over Amarillo. And it, anyway, okay. You got to resist the devil, not invite him into your house. Ephesians 1.18, jot that down. Because the Holy Spirit, I mean, told me this strong in my spirit. Tell everyone to ask me for revelation knowledge. From the Word of God. Ask me for revelation knowledge of the Word of God. Ask me for revelation knowledge from the Word of God. Ephesians 1.18 says that your, the eyes of your understanding would be opened. That you'd have understanding. It's 100% biblical for you to ask the Lord to give you revelation knowledge. Now, here it is. This is why this is so important. Church time. This exact moment. Revelation knowledge comes by hearing. I said, revelation knowledge comes by hearing. I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it, and you know, I've heard it, and I've heard it, and I've heard it. By the way, your hearing is very important. If you don't hear right, you won't see right, and you won't do right. Just ask some basketball players on Accelerate's team. It's okay. I'm not mad at anybody. I told a Nick Kirkpatrick today when his teammate yelled, play, whatever he said, and he ran a different play. I said, you got to hear right, because if you don't hear right, you won't see right, and if you don't see right, you don't do right. Thank God he learned that on the basketball court. <laughs> I didn't have to bring it out in front of everyone, but I know I have enough relational cred with you to know I'm not just calling you, I love Nick, he's a great man of God, praise God. He's a senior this year, hard for me to wrap my mind around. But I told him, I said, you got to hear right. You see, now that's, when, that's in a game situation. You know, that really doesn't amount to a hill of beans when, as you realize life when you stand before God. It's not going to matter. But see, if these young men will use it as training, what will happen? They'll grow up, and then they'll learn. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. i got to hear right from God so that I can see right, so that I can do right. One reason so many people can't do right is because, well, they don't see right. Why do they not see right? Because they don't hear correctly. One of the worst ways to ever hear me preach is to already be offended with me. 
because you're going to think I'm talking about you. Here's the newsflash. I'm talking about you and everyone. Because I ask the Holy Spirit to speak to everyone. That includes you. They are offended with me. So I can't help it. Well, you're preaching to me. Well, I mean, in one way, yeah. But then people, well, it's just to me. No, it wasn't just to you. That's arrogance on your end. I never tailor a message. Let's just say uh, somehow I knew. I didn't even know Brian was going to be here on the front row. And let's say I tailored my message so Brian, he's going to get under conviction tonight. <laughs> you really think I'm going to pastor and just tailor this for Brian so he's under conviction? Well, that would be pretty small-minded. Well, I'm going to do say, Holy Spirit, what do you want? Let me pray in the Holy Spirit for about 30 minutes. Then I can be sensitive to what he wants. Now, now, here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. If I look at my notes, I am about an eighth of the way into my notes, and I'm out of time. So you know what that tells me? I followed the Holy Spirit tonight, and he's been speaking to many of you about many things. Amen. Some of you are like, you are the ones he's specifically talking to. <laughs> Listen, write this down. Revelation comes by hearing the word. Yes, amen. Yeah, you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and all of a sudden, one day, you don't know when it's going to happen. For some, it's quicker than others, depending on how yielded they are to the Lord, truly, when they sit in here. You never know, but all of a sudden, bing, the light's coming on. Now, this auditorium would look different if there was not one light on in here. Then it looks with all the lights on. It's easy to navigate with all the lights on. It's a lot harder with all the lights off. You might stub your toe on a church. Um, excuse me, I'm going to say a church bench. I don't know what I'm saying. On a chair leg. <laughs> Thank you. You know there's four for every chair you see. If it's pitch black and you're supposed to navigate this room, you might trip once or twice. Right? Well, I mean, we're living life and we're on the battlefield. There's a devil loose. Jesus came to destroy his works. We'll shout amen to it, and we should. But then he comes and he steals our lunch and pops the bag in our ear and laughs at us when we're ignorant. That's why we've got to have revelation knowledge. Why do you think? Church is the first option many people take to duck out on in the week. I've got a busy week. First thing out, church. Sorry, I'll get back to it. Ain't no big dishes, church. The problem is you ain't coming to church for people alone. You're supposed to consider one another, but you're not really coming for any of us, much less pastor. You are supposed to have God on your mind, and you're supposed to say, I'm here to hear from God. And when you hear the word preached, something happens. Revelation knowledge comes. And when revelation knowledge comes, it activates your faith so that now you have that supernatural force to get the manifestation of the promise. You're not going to hear this just everywhere. Yeah. This is why church attendance is so important. I happen to remember the general, Dr. Mark T. Barkley, saying, Church attendance is the most effective weapon against the enemy. What is it the enemy is going to attack? Your desire. It's just charge, man. I'm so bored. Hurry up. You know how many distractions, opportunities would come your way during this time? A lot. If God has a word for you. Oh. He does have a word for you. Every time. <laughs> we just don't always have the revelation on it. So revelation knowledge awakens your faith so you can receive what God's provided for you. This is important for you to hear because without activated faith, you ain't got any active victory. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. The enemy is gunning for your faith. He's coming for it. 
Now, one evidence, one evidence that you are in faith is that you will be confident in God. Not confident in your ability. That's going to get you in trouble. You're confident on who, uh, of who you are in Christ. You know in whom you have believed. So things like this come out of your mouth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am grinding that into my children. Every day, you can ask them. You can ask in the days that they're not feeling it and the days that they are. We even got a little two-year-old calling this morning saying it with us. I said, say this with me. They're all looking at me, and I'm looking at that rearview mirror. They, they're not looking at me, but they're listening. I say, I can. They all say, I can. Do all things. Do all things through Christ. Through Christ who strengthens me. I look back this morning and saw a little calling, smiling, saying it. I said, look at that. Two years old, getting that word. And did you know that's the call of every parent? To engrave it upon the heart of the next generation? What? The Word of God. See, i got to engrave that because there's going to be a lot of voices that tell me, you can't do that. You're going to serve God. And you're going to preach about Jesus. And you're going to walk in healing. You're going to walk in prosperity. You can't do that. No, I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think you need to say that with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Go ahead and say it. The Lord is the strength of my life. I will not fear. I will not fear. Ah, praise God. See, this is how faith is released. This is how victory is released. You know how it's not released? Well, I'm worn out. I just can't do it. I'm just, I don't know what's going to happen. I just think I'm going to give up. There's no victory in that. Man, if you'll stay in faith, you'll stay in victory. Write it down, take it to the bank. If you'll stay in faith, you're going to stay in victory. If you'll stay in faith, you're going to stay in victory. That's why one of the greatest scriptures in your New Testament is found in 2 Timothy 4, 7, where Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Look at this part. I have kept the faith. You know what that tells me? He kept the victory. No matter what messenger from Satan was sent to beat him up. It wasn't sickness. That was persecution. And he says plainly, because of the abundance of revelation he had, coincidentally because he prayed in the Holy Ghost so much. Can you just, just know this? The more you pray in tongues, the more revelation you should walk in. Praise God. He kept the faith, therefore he kept the victory. That's why that's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, along with a few thousand others. But I really like that one. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. There's not much you could say better than that at the end of life. I've kept the faith. That means you just kept the victory. You just keep walking in victory. Praise God. Why? Because faith is a victory. How is faith active? Ooh, revelation activates it. How do I get revelation? You hear the word of God. So you got to have revelation knowledge. This is so powerful. I hope you catch this. He kept the faith. Let me show you one other thing about faith in the scriptures here in Ephesians chapter 6, the chapter on the armor of God. It comes to a certain place where it talks about faith. And I want you to notice what it says in Ephesians 6, verse 16. Say it one last time. Do not thank God for the word. Of course, you may say that at home, but that's the last time we'll say it together tonight. He says, above all. Well, this is not optional. I, I, by the way, I, I recommend you put on all the full armor. We just talked about that the other day. Because there is an enemy loose. And he says, take it so you can stand against the enemy, right? But then he gets to this part and he says, above all. Above all. Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And I already knew this, but I looked it up again because I wanted to tell you for sure I do this. You know, I've studied some of these things so many times, I don't, I don't really have to try to come up with something to preach. Now, I'm just packed full of the Word like this, okay? I can just preach the Word anytime. Uh, but but here's, the, here's the thing. I think I ought to go and look some of this stuff up sometimes to make sure it's still there. Make sure I wasn't misled and just thought that I knew this. Darts means missiles thrown. That's what it means. It means an arrow. It means a javelin, a spear. Specifically, though, 
This is a reference to combustible arrowheads that they would set fire to. You've seen it in the movies, right? Where someone lights an arrow on fire, shoots that, and what happens? Well, you know, it could be a house. It could be a ship. And more specifically, it could be a shield that's made out of wood or even leather. That the enemies would shoot at the opposition, and they would do away with their shield. So now anything they want to send their way is going to hit them. Their shield's gone. So the enemy's after your faith, because if he gets after your faith, your shield's gone. But more specifically, here's what you need to catch. Paul the Apostle was looking at this, and he was thinking about the armor that the Romans used. And what they used is a coat of, of, a coat of metal on their shield. So that when their enemies shot an arrow at them that had a flame on it, it would bounce right off and wouldn't set that thing on fire. They would still have their shield. So your faith is the metal on the shield. Shoo! Glory to God. And anything the enemy sends your way, doink! Doink, doink, doink! What if he sends you 500 thoughts a day? Doink, 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 right? Don't hate on my sound effects. Every fiery dart, the enemy said. Every missile. Have y'all seen the news, what's going on in Israel? Surely you have. They send these missiles, these rockets. That's exactly how the enemy works. And praise God, they shoot them down. Thank God, you ought to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, absolutely. But you know what? You really need to pray to God that you're hearing his voice right now. And that you're not being trapped by the enemy and that you know how he works so that you know what to use your shield on. See, the shield of faith isn't going to repel the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't like those tongues. You can't say that by faith. You're only saying that by doubt. So in that area, the devil's eating your lunch, popping a bag in your ear. I don't like it when you talk like that, Pastor. You make me feel bad. Well, change the way you think. You'll feel great. I always have said this for years. Maybe I need to say it more often now, but I always say because people say, you rub me the wrong way. I'm like, That's, you know, it's like the cat furs getting rubbed the wrong way. I say, turn the cat around, phew, line up with the truth, and you're going to be like, oh, you'll start purring. <laughs> yeah, you'll be like, I love this truth. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> hey, what am I here to tell you? Faith is the quencher. Faith is the quencher. So when the enemy sends a flaming missile your way, an arrow, the quencher's going to be your faith. So if you're out of faith, guess what? Hope you like fire. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.